Welcome to the Wilson Wealth Show, a thought-provoking show about building wealth in the new economy. Each week, members of the Wilson Wealth team and their guests will discuss how to navigate the world of personal finance, stocks, real estate, and entrepreneurship to help you build wealth in the new economy. And now, here is your host, Sierra Makash. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Wilson Wealth Show. My name is Sierra, and today I have Maurice with me. How you doing, Maurice? I'm doing great, Sierra. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Today's topic is how to buy life insurance. So Maurice, I feel like life insurance is one of these financial products that people hear a lot about, yet understand very little. Thus, when people, read a po- when people reach a point in their lives where they feel the need to buy life insurance or are being sold life insurance, they don't know how to do it. Luckily for our audience today, you're going to tell us how, right? Yeah, right, Sierra. Life insurance is indeed an area of the financial service world where actual knowledge of the product is taken for granted. It's it's a lot like having good credit. People assume that they are the only ones that don't know how to build good credit because it's so often discussed in a manner that makes you feel like, well, everyone knows how to build good credit and so should I. And the fact is, many people don't know about life insurance, and they definitely don't know about how to buy life insurance. So to help them, I've come up with three things you need to know to buy life insurance. And and it's actually quite simple. It's uh, you need to know why, you need to know what, and you need to know how. Okay, why, what, and how. So can we get an explanation of the why first? Definitely, definitely, definitely. I find that people don't know why they are buying insurance. You don't get car insurance without a car or homeowner's insurance without a house. So why are you getting life insurance? Uh, Well, at the risk of sounding silly (laughs) is the answer because I have a life to protect. Actually, it's not silly. And and it sounds simple. um, And I just add you have a lifestyle to protect. So you have a life and by proxy, you have a lifestyle to protect. Okay, your right. life should be about protecting the lifestyle that you and your family have come to enjoy and expect because of your contributions, be it your income, caregiving for spouses who don't have who don't work a full time job, parenting. Your life allows things to run a certain way for others. And if you weren't here tomorrow, how do we, you know, wait for it, ensure that your loved ones continue to live life a certain way? Right. You know, that makes sense. So like home, car, college, private school, like all stuff like that, right? Absolutely. And I like how you spoke about things that may not be happening right now, like a young child's college fund. I'd also add a spouse's retirement. Most married couples plan for retirement as a couple. So how do we keep that on track? Does your spouse need to get remarried in order to retire the way you plan now that you're gone? What about your three-year-old? Will she still be able to go to college in 15 years? Does that change because you aren't there? And then there's the house. Do we sell the kid's childhood home and downsize since you aren't here to help with the payments? Or do we get to keep it? These questions create the why that we need to know when we enter the marketplace for insurance. Okay. All right. That makes sense to me. So, all right, we've got the why down. Um, Can you explain what the what is? Yes. Now, what amount of protection do you need to protect your lifestyle? What do we need to pay off the mortgage or make monthly mortgage payments for the next 20 years? How much do we need to replace the car in five years? What is needed to fund all the trips the family plan? You know, my family's planning on going, finally going out of the country um, on an extended uh, basis once the pandemic ends. Um, and if heaven forbid, you know, I, I drop dead, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> I'd still want them to go on these trips. I want my kids to have these experiences. So, uh, right. you know, we want money around for that. The list for this type of stuff can get quite lengthy, but this is how you find out the what, what amount of insurance is needed. Um, so this may determine if you need to get a hundred thousand dollar policy or a million dollar policy or more. Unfortunately, most people just pick the amount based on the price of the protection, and that's not a smart way to go about it. 
Okay. I mean, that makes sense because you may get like a great price for like a lower amount, right? But it's not adequate protection for your family, right? Definitely, definitely. You, you know, we're conditioned to get low cost insurance. We got the progressive ads with flow. Um, mm -hmm. We've got these uh, insurance, these like, I don't know the names, but they they run these. If you know, if Bob is a fifty year old male, he wants one million of insurance for ten years. We can get him in for fifty. Like we keep going on price, and and we need to look at protection. Like this is a real deal. Like we all think we're not going to use these policies, and you know, I often think when a celebrity passes, when someone that you know I know passes, I always think. Did they think they were going to, you know, die that day? I mean, no, nobody thinks they're going to die that day. Uh, and right. so, unless it's a long-term illness, but but most people, you know, they, who die early don't die from long-term illnesses. So, so we we have to assume we're actually going to use this policy. So, price is not the way to go. Protection, the why and the what. That's what's that's what's important here. I mean, that makes sense to me. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so let's move into our last thing then. So can you explain the how? All right, now how we protect our lifestyle through insurance. This is where the confusion about life insurance comes in. A good policy for a family is likely to be half a million or more. The cheapest oh. way to get a half million dollars of insurance protection is through a term life insurance policies. The benefits are immediate. You get the same low price for up to 30 years. And not only is the price low, but it stays the same. So every year due to inflation, it gets cheaper. Think about paying the same price for gas over the next 30 years. Okay, that makes sense. Like I never really thought about the fact that in 30 years, you're gonna be in like a much better position than you were when you first got the policy. And you're saying the price never goes up even though your situation gets better? Definitely, you don't get penalized for success. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, that sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> so uh, where does the confusion come in then? Right. So the confusion starts when people ask the question, what do I get after 30 years if I don't die? And the answer is nothing. <laughs> so people, people didn't like the fact that they were going to pay into a policy, even if it was cheap for 30 years and get nothing from it. Now, nobody asks these questions when it comes to auto insurance or homeowners, but it's something about life insurance and people are like, all right, I paid all this money, I didn't get anything. So what the insurance industry did was they created a form of insurance that can last till age 120 and sometimes even longer. Not only does it last longer than 30 years, but it also allows you to build equity or cash in the policy. This is known as a cash value life insurance policy. The policy charges a lot more, but the extra that you're paying in premium goes into a, a bucket that can be used to invest in the stock market. That money is also available for you to withdraw tax-free almost any time. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm going to be honest. So I, you know, obviously I don't know a lot about life insurance and I didn't realize that if you were to get like a 30 year policy and you didn't die within those 30 <laughs> years, it was all for nothing. Like, yeah, that sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's actually a good policy. The problem is in, in the world of insurance, the longer a insurance company of, of any type has to guarantee coverage, the mm -hmm. more expensive it is. So they're, if they're going right. to cover you from, you know, your 30s to your 100s, then they're going to want a lot more in premium to compensate for the risk. And that is why the premiums for these policies are very high by comparison to a term policy, sometimes as much as five to 10 times as much. Now, okay. you would think that such a price disparity would make people choose the lower cost policy um, but people genuinely don't mind paying more money if they can. Okay. Now, the problem is that extra money that you're paying in life insurance premium probably can be better used to invest in the stock market directly for retirement. Oh, And that's where you sometimes hear this phrase, buy term insurance and that's the difference. So instead of paying, you know, let's just use the easy number, $500 for an insurance policy, pay 50 and invest the 450. Uh, studies have shown that that's probably a better use for your money um, than buying the expensive insurance. Okay. I, okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. 
So, okay, out of the box question here. Mm -hmm. um, with all of that being said, is there like a good age where you should start thinking about buying life insurance? Oh, that, that's, that's a great question. Great question. Um, so it, this, so if you're working with me, um, I always have my uh, female clients. This isn't sex. This is really <laughs> based on actual real world experience. It's highly likely that um, a client of mine who's female tends to be one of the more responsible, one of the more dependable people in their family. It, it's just kind of what goes with the territory. Okay. And so they are also seen as the ones who will be leading the caregiving efforts for elderly parents. Um, and so what I always tell my ladies is go ahead and get the insurance, you know, typically in your mid twenties, because you might be a caregiver earlier than you expect. You might not ever have kids or get married. It's just kind of the, the way the trends are working, but you might be taking care of your, your parents, um, even your grandparents. And so if you're relied upon to be a caregiver, and then, as I said before, you don't know if you'll pass before they pass, they're relying again on your life to help give them care. So you can buy a policy that will then ensure that that care continues. So for my female clients, I recommend sooner rather than later, typically mm. mid twenties. Okay. Um, the same applies for men, but I find that men want to wait till they get married and or have kids before they finally get uh, their own insurance policy. Um, but uh, but I would do I would do mid twenties for almost anybody. Now when we go mid twenties. I, I almost say, hey, get the term life insurance. It's, it's cheaper. You got other wealth building efforts to pursue. Mm -hmm. But in the late 40s, early 50s, I will say if the cash flow is right, if things are in place, you can look at the more expensive policy, but not so much for insurance, but for the tax-free benefits that are in that policy. Okay. Okay. See, that makes complete sense. Like, you know, it's one of those things. <laughs> Life insurance is one of those things, like you said earlier in the episode, like building credit. No one really tells you anything about it. And you always think that you're just going to become an adult and you'll just know about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I was always like, well, once I reach a certain age, I'm just going to know about this stuff. Right. <laughs> and you don't. Like, I had, I never even thought to consider taking care of my parents or my grandparents and that life insurance would help that too. Like yeah. it's very cut and dry the way that we view life insurance. I always thought, okay, well when I'm married and I have children, then I'll start thinking about it. But I mean, you're totally right. Like you don't know what's going to happen with the rest of your family. You don't know if their retirement's going to add up, you yeah. know, yeah. if they're going to need extra help, you know, you really just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Insurance is for the unexpected. It's for the, it's, it's not, it's really, you know, like, okay. And in fact, let's go with that. You expect to live to a certain age. Okay. Most people have it somewhere between 80 and a hundred, <laughs> you know? And so if you don't live to those ages, um, that's where the insurance kicks in. If your house does burn down, that's where the insurance kicks in the car accident, uh, you know, the unfortunate diagnosis at the hospital, the insurance. I mean, it's for the unexpected. So um, taking care of your parents is an unexpected, although increasingly expected reality uh, for 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 this generation. I'm including your generation and mine. Um, you know, people are living longer. Caregivers are hard to come by. And so it's typically going to fall on one person in that family. So. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it makes yeah. sense. And a yeah. lot of the times it is, it's, well, the older sibling for sure, mm -hmm. I feel like is, it usually falls on them. But especially if you're like an older female sibling, oh, oh yeah. Oh, it's all you. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, 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 you know, there's, there's, there's still, there's no gender uh, role um, arguments in the caregiving, mm -hmm. in the caregiving area. It's still, it's still pretty one-sided right now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so for our wrap up, Maurice, can you give us a quick basic rundown of everything you've just told us, your ultimate advice? Definitely. I think something I'm going to add just based on the conversation we've had today is assume that you don't know anything. Um, you know, if you assume you don't know anything, then you can quickly get into the first thing you need to know, which is know your why. Like why? I don't know anything about insurance. Why am I getting it? Right. And then you're going to say, OK, well, I, 
I have this life and this lifestyle that I like, my, my family likes, my kids, um, they come to depend on it. And so that's why I'm getting life insurance. I want to protect this. So know your why, bullet point number one. Bullet point mm-hmm. number two, know what, know what it costs or know what, what you need to protect that lifestyle. Is this a $100,000 experience, a million, two million, three million? What will it take to keep this lifestyle in place? Now, this is typically where my married couples will turn to each other and say, oh, I'm, I'm worth more to you dead than alive. It's, it's a standard joke in the business. Don't let that stop you. The insurance industry <laughs> is very aware of, you know, spouses killing spouses for the insurance. It's, it's, it's one of the first things they do. So if you're worried about your spouse killing you, they were probably going to kill you anyway. Not to be morbid. <laughs> we were all thinking it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was like, million dollars. I is, see. I see why yes, this happens. <laughs> it, is, it is. The insurance industry is very old. I mean, really old. They, they live for that setup. You know, they know yeah. they got to a dossier of all the ways people try to do this stuff. So well, I'm just yeah. telling you, don't try. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's such a common like movie trope though. Yes. I mean, who is. hasn't seen that happen in the movies where somebody tries to kill somebody for money yep. and then the insurance people are so on top of it. Oh gosh. Yeah. So yeah. on top, they're, they're like, like detectives in their car watching you from the street yes. on top of it. Oh, yeah. Like th- that's a very, and I, and I actually do believe that. I believe oh, that yeah. 100% happens because it's such a common thing. I mean, oh, yeah. I can't tell you how many true crime things I've heard where they've killed their spouse for yeah. the insurance. It yeah. makes sense. And the, re- and the great thing is. <laughs> Not because, to be morbid. <laughs> well, and because you're calling it true crime means they got caught, right? It's just yeah. like, it's not. A, it's, it's not <laughs> they got caught. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're going to be, you're immediately the suspect. Just <laughs> so, you know. That's just how it works. So don't do that, guys. Let's yes, just, don't let's, do let's that. Disclaimer. <laughs> but, so, so, so married couples, go ahead and get it. Don't worry about it. Uh, so know your why, know your what. And then finally, know how to get this protection. Um, Mm. You know, there are two forms of insurance, basically affordable, low cost insurance. Um, And then there's a more expensive uh, brand of insurance that allows you to do some bells and whistles like investing, um, you know, uh, pulling out the money for things like college, retirement. Um, These are all good things, um, but it comes with a very steep price tag, sometimes five to 10 times the amount of the lower cost insurance. So decide accordingly um, and make the decision that's best for you and your family. And those are the three things. Wow. All right. Well, I love that. Thank you all for listening today. To find out more about us and the company, please visit us at www.wilsonwealth.com on Instagram and Twitter at Wilson Wealth and on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Wilson Wealth for more information about us and the company. We'll see you guys next week on the Wilson Wealth Show. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Wilson Wealth Show a thought-provoking show about building wealth in the new economy. Each week, members of the Wilson Wealth team and their guests will discuss how to navigate the world of stocks, real estate, and entrepreneurship to help you build wealth in the new economy. Please join us next time on the Wilson Wealth Show.